previously, we have looked at what photosynthesis is and the requirements for photosynthesis. We have also looked at how different factors can affect the rate of photosynthesis and how these factors can be controlled in a commercial greenhouse. Now we are going to look inside the structure of a leaf and see how it has been designed to make the maximum use of sunlight and how it is the powerhouse of sugar production. Leaves really are amazingly well designed. Let's start with the general shape. Whether or not they are broad leaves or narrow leaves, leaves are generally flat. There are some exceptions, like pine needles, but on the whole, they are flat. This increases the surface area to volume ratio, making sure the maximum use is made of all available sunlight. Most leaves are green. They are absolutely full of chloroplasts, which in turn are full of chlorophyll, and we know how important this is for photosynthesis. Most of the cells in a leaf contain chloroplasts, but they are mostly concentrated in the palisade cells. These are on the upper side of the leaf, gaining the most sunlight. There are, however, two layers above the palisade cell. These are the upper epidermis and the waxy cuticle. These are designed to help limit water loss and protect the leaves from disease and insect attack. Below the spongy mesophyll, there is a lower epidermis. This layer contains guard cells. When they open, they create apertures called stomata. This is where CO2 gets to the inner area of the leaf, and the stomata close when there is not enough water. So these are the main cells that make up the leaf, but there is one thing we have left until last. That's right. These chlorophyll-packed cells photosynthesize to produce glucose. This is required by all the living plant cells for respiration, and not just the cells in the leaves, the glucose needs to be moved around. Exactly. The plants have a transport network of phloem cells to transport sugars all over the plants to all the living cells. There's one last part to the transport system. Remember, photosynthesis requires water and mineral nutrients like magnesium and nitrates. These come from the soil and travel up inside the plant to, or tree to the leaves in a network of xylem cells. The phloem and the xylem share a network and be, can be seen as a vascular bundle in the cross-section of leaves. So there you have it. Our series of four films covers everything you need to know on photosynthesis and how it works and what factors affect the rate of photosynthesis. We know it's important because the food chain would collapse without it. <laughs> Hopefully you will have picked up some useful information to help you with your revision. You can test yourself by doing the multiple choice quiz on photosynthesis. Good luck and remember, science rocks!